Joining me now is KTIV's Katie Koppel, reporting live from the ground at the border of Iowa and South Dakota. Katie, a, a few hours ago, the Sioux City Fire Chief said there was still water spilling over from nearby rivers. Bring us up to speed on what the situation is on the ground and what's in the forecast. That's right, Chris. I mean, as you can see behind me, it's just one of the most dramatic images that we have coming out of this region here in the Iowa and South Dakota area. Now, this bridge started going down just before 11 p.m. last night. I was here a few minutes short, uh, after that, and it, it looks a lot different now. Let's uh, see if we can get some video up so you can truly get a scope of uh, the damage that we're seeing here. The section of this train bridge is on the North Sioux City, South Dakota side, and it has collapsed and shifted in the water. The bridge is on the BNSF rail line connecting South Dakota and Iowa. It is a major transportation line for this region. Here you can really see how fast and how harshly the floodwaters are running through the Big Sioux River. This was just taken this morning. This river crested at 3.30 this morning at 44.98 feet, which is historic flood levels for the Big Sioux River. Now this crest came several hours sooner than officials expected and also came in several feet higher than officials predicted. The amount of rain this region has seen in the last few weeks really wreaking havoc here today. Now, losing this rail passage, as we've said, between South Dakota and Iowa, a devastating blow. State officials saying today it'll likely be months before we see this line open again. We reached out to BNSF and they said in part that they had already stopped traffic here on the railroad bridge. Uh, and so nothing has been running across this. But again, it's going to be months before this is fixed. I'm going to see if we can take this back live so my photographer can give you an even closer look. You can just see how fast this water is rolling through. Uh, the bridge here, you can see the, the one on the one side of your screen here on the North Sioux City, South Dakota side is the one that collapsed at first. And uh, the other one has also started to give away. If you can see behind there, you can also see the amount of debris that is coming and collecting. We have widespread flooding here from the Big Sioux River, also the Missouri River, the nearby Little Sioux River. And it's just catastrophic flooding all throughout Northeast Iowa and Southeast South Dakota. Just up the river here uh, in McCook Lake, we have homes entirely washed away. Uh, but it, it's safe to say this region has really been impacted by these floodwaters. It's going to be a long time before we get uh, any sort of recovery process started. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem saying earlier this morning at a news conference here in South Dakota that this is a crisis situation here in this region. I'm Katie Koppel in North Sioux City reporting. Back to you. Katie, thank you so much for that. Well, Larry, it was standing room only at the North Sioux City Fire Hall this afternoon as Governor Noem and several state and local representatives came together to brief us on really what's happening. I want you to take a look behind me. I'm going to step out of the frame here just so you can see it. Look how high this water level is here. We're down at the Missouri River Boat Club along the Big Sioux River just at the Iowa South Dakota state line. Now when I drove into Dakota Dunes earlier today about 145, this was not this high. But I want to show you what it looked like this morning. Let's get that uh, video up. We shot some drone video earlier today from Skylink 4, and you can see the water level from this morning. I mean, it's high. It was definitely, definitely rising. But let's take a look at what uh, my, my colleague Morgan Jones shot just a few hours ago at about 3.30. The water level was even higher. And then when you take a look at what we saw just a moment ago where I'm at today, this water is rising very, very fast here on the Big Sioux River. And that seems to be the biggest area of concern for officials, including Governor Nome. Uh, not necessarily the Missouri River, but the Big Sioux River. There's a lot of uh, unregistered and, and other tributaries that flow into the Big Sioux River that are, are really causing a lot of this flooding from all this rain. Now, officials are going to be closing Interstate 29 in less than an hour. That's going to close at 6 p.m. tonight from exit four to exit nine. At exit four, they're gonna be building a brand new levee to hopefully curb the effects of the flooding that we could see here along the Big Sioux River and the Missouri and also dumping that into McCook Lake. That's also a big concern for residents here along the area. Now, uh, Governor Kristi Noem touched on that closure today and, and why it needs to happen. We do plan to close the interstate later on tonight to build a levee system across it. Uh, to do that to protect infrastructure so we'll be making that announcement and working towards getting that constructed so that we can control as much of the flow of water as we possibly can that'll join up and protect some of the other levees that we see and make sure that we're diverting traffic around that levee as it's built across the interstate 
Now, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was also on hand this afternoon. They say the water is nearly to the top of the Gavin's Point Dam, and right now uh, they're not they're not too worried, but there's also not a lot they can do. They say uh, people downriver should should definitely be prepared, but they're also monitoring that situation very closely. So we look at north central Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota, and northwest Iowa. We've had a tremendous amount of rain over the last seven, eight days. And I think the Net National Weather Service has categorized it in upwards of 600% of average, right? And so that's what's really contributing to kind of the numbers that uh, Governor Nome talked about, right? We're talking about historic flows on unregulated tributaries into the Missouri River. Those unregulated flows, that heavy rain causing this flooding that we're seeing here across the tri-state region. For those that live in Dakota Dunes, North Sioux, or really anywhere along these, uh, the Big Sioux River, the Missouri River, they are urging you to take precautions. Dakota Dunes putting out a voluntary evacuation notice uh, for residents. now. If the levee should be topped that they have in place, and they are working on reinforcing those levees at the moment, if those are topped or if they fail, there's going to be a mandatory evacuation in place. Officials urging everyone to be prepared and to take this seriously. I think we've got one more video to show you, and that is from the Sioux City uh, Riverfront over at the Sioux City Boat Dock near the Hilton. This is video from earlier today. Again, the Missouri River is still a, a major concern for a lot of officials here, but the biggest one I think for, for many people is, is the Big Sioux River. Um, if we can come back on camera here, I want you to just see what we're dealing with. Again, so the, I'm gonna have Morgan maybe move the camera here so you can see it. You can see the old Missouri River Boat Club that uh, is right behind me. And, and mind you, this thing has, that has flooded several times. You can see uh, the boat lifts, the tents, the docks have already floated away. I think luckily everyone has gotten their boat out of the water, uh, but just in the few, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so that we've been standing here, this water has already risen quite a bit. So if you live on and along the Big Sioux River, the Missouri River, please take caution. And we're gonna have more tonight coming up at 10. Larry. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, that's right, Larry. So I'm at the Missouri River Boat Club. So this is the Big Sioux River behind me. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with this area, the Dakota Dunes area in South Dakota is just right on the other side of this, of this river. But I'm going to step out of this camera frame so KTV's Morgan Jones can show you what we're seeing here. So uh, the Big Sioux River is the biggest area of concern for South Dakota uh, local and state officials. Governor Kristi Noem was in North Sioux City today uh, just a couple of hours ago, actually, with state officials and uh, local officials as well. Uh, while they are concerned about the Missouri, this Big Sioux River is the one that I think has their uh, highest concern. Now, in less than half an hour, I-29 north and southbound is going to be closed. I repeat, I-29 north and southbound will be closed from exit 2, right here in the dunes, to exit 9. Now, they're going to build a new levee across I-29 at exit 4 in North Sioux City. That's to protect all of this flooding that's coming from the Big Sioux River. This river has greatly risen in uh, its, its water capacity in just the last couple of hours. Uh, earlier in this newscast, we showed you video from this morning from the sky. I mean, this, this thing has not crested yet. I, I believe that's supposed to be tomorrow, but it is rising fast. Uh, the big warning from officials today as I step back into frame is stay away from the water. Don't go on the shore. But, but take caution if you're in the dunes. Uh, they are under a voluntary evacuation at this time if you live along the water. Um, but if that levee breaks or gets overtopped and these floodwaters come in, it's going to be a mandatory evacuation. So be sure uh, that you stay right here with KTIV and we'll make sure you get the latest information. Yeah, with uh, at KTIV's Morgan Jones down here at the Missouri River Boat Club, Katie Koppel. All right, thanks. Alan Larry, I was actually here last night at about 11 o'clock, just as this bridge started giving out. You can see it right behind me, but before we get to this video, I wanted you to take a look at what it looks like from the sky just hours ago. You can see the scope of the collapse from our Skylink 4 drone. The section of this train bridge on the North Sioux City side has collapsed and shifted. This bridge is on the BNSF rail line connecting South Dakota and Iowa. It's a major transportation line for this region. Now, as we take a closer look at what we're seeing on the ground here, you can really see how fast and how harshly the floodwaters are running through the Big Sioux River. That river cresting around 3.30 this morning at 44.98 feet. That crest came several hours sooner than expected and also came in several feet higher than predicted. 
The amount of rain this region has seen in the last few weeks really wreaking havoc here today. Losing this rail passage between South Dakota and Iowa is a devastating blow to this region. And state officials saying today it will likely be months before this line is open again. BNSF's director of external communications responding to a statement saying, we have been monitoring the region through our increased track inspections and had not been operating over the bridge at North Sioux City as a precaution giving the conditions. All trains are being rerouted via Creston, Iowa. We will continue to monitor and inspect conditions in the area and execute recovery operations as needed. Now, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem was in North Sioux City again this morning, just hours after she was here yesterday afternoon. Uh, she spoke on the devastation that we've seen in this area from the floods. Now, earlier this week, the governor signed a disaster declaration giving aid to 21 counties in South Dakota. But as she stated today, while there are several communities here in South Dakota that are seeing flood water and seeing damage, here in North Sioux City and specifically McCook Lake is the most critical situation. And remember there's other communities that are suffering as well. We have Mitchell and Yankton and all those along the river that are dealing with flooded basements and houses that are gone and damaged property. But right here is certainly one of the areas that we're seeing that is, is the crisis situation that needs to be dealt with today. The governor speaking to those residents impacted by these floodwaters, especially, again, those in the McCook Lake area who have lost their homes entirely. She says she and the state are standing with them through this difficult time. And I know a lot of families have lost their personal property. They've had damage to their homes. It's going to impact them for weeks and months and yet to come. Uh, and, and we're just deeply grieved by what we see as far as damage and what they'll have to deal with. But we'll be walking alongside them and be offering all the resources that we possibly can to help them get back to normal as soon as possible, as soon as we see these high waters recede and move out of the area. A few other updates from Governor Nome's news conference this morning. Interstate 29 that was closed yesterday in order to uh, for crews to build a levee uh, to stop some of this water on the Big Sioux River. That is expected to open a lot sooner than uh, expected uh, yesterday, uh, according to the governor. We could see that interstate reopening as early as later today. Now, Alan Larry, a bit of good news for those that utilize the main artery through the state every day. Well, Alan or Larry, I was here last night as it started to collapse just before 11 p.m. and a lot has changed since then. I'm going to step out of the way so Chief Photographer Acacia Phillips can give you a better look at what we're seeing. Now you can see here really how fast and how harshly the floodwaters are running through the Big Sioux River. This river has crested. That crested happened about 3.30 this 3.30 this morning at about 44.98 feet. That crest came several hours sooner than expected and also came in several feet higher than predicted. The amount of rain this region has seen in the last few weeks has really been wreaking havoc in this area. Now let's take a look from the sky. You can see the scope of the collapse from our Skylink 4 drone. This video taken just a couple hours ago. Now the section of the train bridge on the North Sioux City side has collapsed and shifted and that was the first part to go. The, the other half of this on the Iowa side has also started collapsing. The bridge is on the BNSF rail line connecting South Dakota and Iowa and a major transportation line for this region. Now losing this rail passage between South Dakota and Iowa, a devastating blow and state officials saying today it will likely be months before this line is open again. BNSF's director of external communications responding in a statement saying we have been monitoring the region through our increased track inspections and had not been operating over the bridge at North Sioux City as a precaution given the conditions. All trains are being rerouted via Creston, Iowa. We will continue to monitor and inspect conditions in the area and execute recovery operations as needed. Now, Larry, another bit of good news for uh, residents today. Governor Kristi Noem saying just hours ago that she expects to have Interstate 29 open here in South Dakota as early as today. As of, of course, we have a levee that was built across exit four there on I-29. So a bit of good news there for that major, major thoroughfare here in South Dakota. But for now with Acacia Phillips, I'm Katie Koppel. Larry, back to you. Katie, incredible pictures coming in. What are you seeing there today? Well, Graham, I was here last night just before 11 o'clock central time when this collapse first started happening and this bridge started taking on water. We're about 15 hours removed from that and it looks so much worse. Let's see if we can get some drone video up for you that we shot just a few hours ago. You can see the scope of the collapse from our drone. The section of the train bridge on the North Sioux City, South Dakota side has collapsed and shifted, also taking the Iowa side down with it. Now, this is a bridge on the BNSF rail line 
that connects South Dakota and Iowa. It's a major transportation line for this region. Now, if we can take a closer look at what we're seeing on the ground here, you can really see how fast and how harshly the floodwaters are running through the Big Sioux River. This river cresting around 3.30 this morning at 44.98 feet. Now that crest came several hours sooner than expected and also came in several feet higher than officials predicted. The amount of rain this region has seen in the last few weeks really wrecking havoc here today. Now losing this rail passage between South Dakota and Iowa really a devastating blow to this region. And state officials saying today it will likely be months before this line is open again. We reached out to BNSF and their director of external communications told us, quote, we have been monitoring the region for our increased track inspection and have not been operating over this bridge at North Sioux City as a precaution given the conditions. All trains are being rerouted via Creston, Iowa. We will continue to monitor and inspect conditions in the area and execute recovery operations as needed. Now, South Dakota Governor Christy Nome was back in North Sioux City today as this area has received extensive flooding over the last couple of hours. Earlier this week, the governor declared a disaster declaration for 21 counties in South Dakota, but in her address this morning, she said here is the most critical situation. And remember, there's other communities that are suffering as well. We have Mitchell and Yankton and all those along the river that are dealing with flooded basements and houses that are gone and damaged property. But right here is certainly one of the areas that we're seeing that is, is the crisis situation that needs to be dealt with today. The governor speaking to those residents impacted by these floodwaters this morning, especially those in the nearby McCook Lake area, some of them who have lost their homes entirely that have collapsed with the running water. She says she and the state are standing with them through this difficult time. And I know a lot of families have lost their personal property. They've had damage to their homes. It's going to impact them for weeks and months and yet to come. Uh, and, and we're just deeply grieved by what we see as far as damage and what they'll have to deal with. But we'll be walking alongside them and be offering all the resources that we possibly can to help them get back to normal as soon as possible, as soon as we see these high waters recede and move out of the area. Now, yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening, actually about 6 p.m. Central Time, Interstate 29, a major thoroughfare here between South Dakota and Iowa, was closed down just up the road from North Sioux City. So crews could build a levee to stop all of this water from the Big Sioux River from hitting the North Sioux City area. Now, a bit of good news from the governor's press conference this morning that interstate should uh, could likely reopen later today or tomorrow. So a little bit of a glimmer of light here in North Sioux City, South Dakota. But with uh, Chief Photographer Acacia Phillips, I'm Katie Koppel. Graham, I'm going to send it back to you. I do, Jessica. Well, this is a historic piece of in, in transportation infrastructure here in Siouxland connecting Iowa and South Dakota. Now, a lot has changed. I was out here at noon today. I was also out here last night when uh, this bridge started giving out just before 11 p.m. A lot has changed in that short amount of time. I'm going to step out of the camera view so my photographer, Acacia Phillips, can give people a better view at what we are seeing here today. Now, this is the BNS, BNSF Railroad Bridge connecting North Sioux City and the Riverside neighborhood of Sioux City. This bridge began taking on water just before 11 o'clock Sunday night and has slowly sunk further into the Big Sioux River throughout the day. Now this impacts train travel between Iowa and South Dakota, with officials saying it'll be months before we could see this line open again. BNSF telling KTV this morning that they have rerouted trains through Creston, Iowa. Now the Big Sioux River, arguably the biggest story of the floods here in the metro. Last night, crews closed I-29 at exit 2 through exit 9 to build a levee across exit 4 of I-29 uh, and, and try and divert some of that water coming from the Big Sioux River. Now, with the predicted crest of the Big Sioux River, crews thought they had more time and that the levee or that the crest was going to be even lower. That turned out not to be the case. That flood water came in much faster and much harder than they expected. Um, I know that because of the levee system that is the emergency plan that's followed by North Sioux City and it was planned and followed successfully that the industrial park in all of North Sioux City uh, was saved from tra traumatic damage but we did see some at McCook Lake and we saw houses that were significantly impacted. Now KTV's Taylor Tecker took a guided tour through McCook Lake earlier this morning. She joins us now with the impact that's had on that community. 
houses are gone, washed away at McCook Lake. It's a really heartbreaking scene that's coming out of there. We are as close as we can get to the McCook Lake area. We're actually on Military Road where roads are closed all throughout the area due to the current flooding situation. Take a look at the road that's been washed out in a video. This is North Shore Drive, which was overflowing from the Big Sioux River. Residents have been displaced. This school in the Dakota Valley School has reported to have had some flooding as well. At least two homes have washed into the lake now. Swift Water Rescue was helping residents overnight and throughout the morning. Earlier this morning, Union County Emergency Manager spoke on the damage. The biggest question many have is why this happened to McCook Lake. Uh, what occurred yesterday was a result of a mitigation effort. Mitigation is designed to lessen the effects of flooding in our area and also lessen the effects on critical infrastructure. If we did not take the mitigation efforts that we took yesterday, much of North Sioux City itself would be underwater. We were able to go back with the Union County Sheriff's Department as an escort to get video of this damage firsthand. But people were driving around the barricades trying to go north while we were there. Don't come up street or drive here. As you can see at this intersection, we're turning semis around here. You're going to have to go through Nebraska to get north. We're asking you do not go around barricades you can be written, written citations for it. As I said, the sheriff personally drove us to this area with clearance to get these images for the community. It is not safe to be in the North Sioux City area until the Union County Emergency Management says to do so. I-29 is covered, seeing the waters from the Big Sioux River overflowing over both lanes of the highway. The sheriff added that this flooding was worse than the 2011 flooding for the area. A levee was built of sand and clay right underneath this bridge over the highway, working to block water. People are supposed to stay out of the area until it's safe to do so and right now that area is not clear for anyone to be in. So uh, we have more coverage of the McCook Lake on KTIV.com. For now reporting in North Sioux City, McCook Lake area, Taylor Deckert, KTIV News 4. Reporting for us from McCook Lake. Now the, the message from emergency officials tonight, turn around and don't drown, especially when encountering flooded roads, as most flood deaths do occur in vehicles. Be especially cautious at night when it is harder to see where the flooding is occurring. Back to you, Jessica. Matt and Jessica, the Big Sioux River, arguably the biggest story of the day here in the metro. Last night, as you mentioned, the crews uh, did close the interstate beginning at the North Sioux City exit to build a levee across exit four just up the road. With the predicted crest levels on the Big Sioux, crews thought they had a bit of time to get that levee done. But the floodwaters had other plans. They came in fast. They came in hard. Now, the levee was built just in time for the Big Sioux to come rushing in and all of that water was diverted right into McCook Lake. In a news conference this morning, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem said the levee worked just as it was supposed to. The crews finished construction and in 2014 when we built that levee as well in the same location, the floodwaters never did reach it, but yesterday it was needed and it did divert water. Yesterday it happened in a, on a very accelerated time frame from what we had originally thought. Now the levee was built just in time for the Big Sioux to come rushing in, diverting again that water into McCook Lake. But despite the diversion, the Big Sioux still rose high enough to cause the railroad bridge linking North Sioux City and Riverside to collapse last night. You can see behind me now this historic piece of infrastructure is is in the water. I mean, it's 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 clear to see. I'm going to step out of the way so Acacia Phillips, our chief photographer, can give you a better look. You can see just the extent of the damage done here to this BNSF railroad line. You can see the bridge began taking on water and it is underwater, this piece that connects North Sioux City to the Riverside neighborhood. The uh, bridge began to collapse last night just before 11 and continues to do so today. It is hanging on and while it is in the water, it has not detached from the shoreline. Now this rail line impacting train travel between Iowa and South Dakota with, with officials saying it will be months before we can see this line open again. We have even more coverage from Governor Nome and also from McCook Lake, South Dakota and the damage that we've seen in that community online now at KTIV.com. With Chief Photographer Acacia Phillips, I'm Katie Koppel in North Sioux City. Matt and Jessica, back to you.
Well, Jessica, they had just minutes to leave as water streamed in, many of them with just the clothes on their backs. You saw a glimpse of that drone video earlier, just catastrophic damage across McCook Lake. And really, it's just devastating. But we're going to show you that video again. This uh, once vibrant and tight knit community along the lake now just gone. As we mentioned, catastrophic damage left behind after floodwaters from the Big Sioux River roared in on Sunday night. Earlier this morning, I met with a handful of McCook Lake residents who described the horrifying minutes of trying to get out as those floodwaters came. Many of them having just minutes before those waters were knee deep and climbing. They described to me exactly what they experienced. I, I heard screaming outside and looked outside and, and I had neighbors that had water rushing into their place and, and water was slowly rising in my driveway. Yeah, within eight minutes, I was leaving my house and, and driving through water that was up over my step rails on my Jeep. Yeah, but after we got our house done and everything, um, came back to my car, which was already halfway up, I went back into the floodwaters, grabbed him out of his house and then also grabbed um, neighbor's cat from her house also too. <laughs> Um, and we almost made it out of the floodwaters, but the vehicle stranded, but we're here and that's the biggest part that counts is we're all together and it's a community. These residents, they're more than just neighbors and they're friends and many of them reunited for the first time this morning just ahead of our interview. Now, the one thing they all said to me is they want answers, answers to what comes next and answers to when they can get into this neighborhood to see their homes. They are desperately seeking communication from officials. I'll have more from these residents coming up tonight on News 4 at 6, but following my conversation with the McCook Lake residents, I had a one-on-one -on -one interview with South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. She has been in Union County for three consecutive days, and yesterday she did tour McCook Lake to see the damage for herself. Um, I asked her just what these residents can expect from state officials. We just need to understand that there's a lot of needs right now, and we've done this before, but but this is hard, and um, and it's going to be something we're going to have to get through together. Remember to love each other and to help mm -hmm. your neighbors, because that's what makes South Dakota so special, is that we, we tend to approach this in a way that we focus on helping each other instead of, um, you know, worrying so much about, um, you know, attacking each other when we're tired. Now, Governor Nome did stress the importance of staying away from this McCook Lake neighborhood. There are barricades up for a reason. She is going to be increasing police and uh, law enforcement presence here because people have been getting in and it is an extremely dangerous situation. She's saying some of these sinkholes 80 to 100 feet deep, live power lines, just a, a lot of dangerous things out here. So stay away. She understands residents want to get in, but that plan will be coming soon. I will have more from Governor Nome as well coming up later on at News 4 at 6. Jessica. Matt and Jessica, what these people experienced on Sunday night is shocking. They had minutes to leave, most of them with just the clothes on their backs. You saw a glimpse moments ago of the devastation, the catastrophic devastation here in McCook Lake, but we're going to show you that again. The once vibrant, tight-knit community along the lake now just gone. Catastrophic damage left behind after floodwaters from the Big Sioux River roared in on Sunday night. Earlier this morning, I did meet with a handful of McCook Lake residents who described the horrifying minutes of trying to get out as those floodwaters rushed in. Many of them, again, only having minutes before the waters were knee deep and climbing. It's been about 48 hours since this all happened, and right now, they just want answers. Communication is, is huge. I mean, we go up to these, uh, to these barricades and say, you know, what do you know? Um, they know that we can't go beyond that point. They are, they are local people saying we're protecting this line and you can't go beyond here. Well, yes, but what do you know? They know nothing. Um, we know nothing. Um, there's nobody here to help us. Um, look around, there's, there's nothing. There's just a bunch of neighbors that have lost their houses and what do we do, where do we go? One resident getting emotional, describing how he found out about what happened. Like there's a crater in front of my home. Mm -hmm. Like I was in Arizona for two days. We're supposed to be there with my wife's parents and we're literally mm -hmm. living out of a suitcase. Like I don't have anything of a one-year-old son. 
These residents, they're more than just neighbors, they're friends, many of them reuniting for the first time this morning ahead of our interview. I'll have more from these residents coming up tonight on News 4 at 10 and following that conversation with McCook Lake residents, I sat down with South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem. Now she's been in Union County for three consecutive days beginning on Sunday. This is the governor's third day and she also visited McCook Lake yesterday getting a view of this damage for herself. The biggest concern, she says, her, her, her own concern and also that of emergency personnel here is the unauthorized people coming into McCook Lake and going around the barricades that you see here behind me. She says that they're working on getting residents beyond these barricades to see their homes, but it's going to take time. But she says she's stepping up police presence in the meantime. And we're going to start really being serious about making sure that people stay out of these dangerous situations. We've got power lines down and sinkholes and drop offs of 30, 40, 50 feet. It's dangerous and houses are gone. So we understand that people want their stuff, but we'll come up with a schedule where people can get into their home for a moment, but they need to be escorted and it needs to be done safely. So hopefully that announcement will be coming out soon. Governor Nome stressed the importance of staying away from McCook Lake. She and the and Union County will be increasing police presence in the area to keep people out because of how dangerous it is. I will have more tonight for my interview with Christy Nome, but I want you to take a look behind me. You can see a sinkhole just beyond the barricades. It's Matt and Jessica, it's just it's catastrophic seeing it from the sky, from the drone, but to see it here in person just beyond me, there's there's a home that's also in a sinkhole and completely gone. It, it is dangerous to be out here. So as much as these residents want to get in, they understand the law enforcement understand they want to see what their homes are like, but it, it's not safe right now. There is a plan that is being created to get these residents back into their homes.